Wow, got a nice turkey here. Check it out, great fan. Welcome to another edition of Herod's Cookhouse, Field the Table, and today we're gonna make wild turkey enchiladas. Let's head on back to the house. Outdoorsmen have been providing fresh food for American family tables for generations. Hunting and fishing is a way of life for our family, and we enjoy cooking delicious fish and game meals. We want to share our recipes with you. This week we are making wild turkey enchiladas, a great recipe for using leg meat. We satisfy our sweet tooth with cream cheese churros and enjoy our meal on a beautiful spring day. This is Herod's Cookhouse Field to Table. Hey everybody, well Dad, Ron and I had a great time turkey hunting this past spring and I thought, hey, it's time to cook some wild turkey. I love eating wild turkey. Today we're going to make turkey enchiladas with the turkey that we got this spring. We're also gonna have some fresh salsa, some corn and black bean salad, and some cream cheese churros. Boy, they're gonna be really good. I really like using uh, wild turkey in these recipes. It's very lean like most wild game is. The legs are, are usually kind of tough, so making enchiladas with them is kind of a great way to do it. So that's what we're gonna do today. The way I'm gonna start is I'm gonna trim up the fat and some other pieces off of these. As usual, we always wanna sharpen up our knife and we're gonna use the workshop combo sharpener for that. So I'm just gonna give it a couple passes here. This is a really easy knife sharpener to use. Make it nice and sharp. We'll hit it with the ceramic here on the side, and that should work. So in order to clean these up, really all we want to do is get all these little pin feathers off and the fat. And so I'm just going to kind of trim these up. It's a great way for this kind of tougher meat. You want to boil it and it will come right off the bone quite easy. It takes about an hour, but we'll be making some other stuff in the meantime. You know, wild turkey hunting has become really popular in the Northwest. Um, it's a lot of fun. It really gives us outdoorsmen something to do between hunting season, uh, always in the fall. So now you've got something to do in the spring. Really enjoy being in the mountains in the springtime where everything's coming to life. Okay, I think that's pretty pretty good. That gets most of it off. So like I said, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, put these in some boiling water for a while. And this is pretty hot already. It's just right on the edge of boil. So I'm gonna go and put them in. Really all we need to do is get them so that they're covered. So we're just gonna go like that. Put this over here. Give your hands a quick rinse. Now let's go ahead and start on our fresh salsa. Now this is something my dad loves to make. Uh, he makes fresh salsa all the time and it's pretty easy. We have canned tomatoes, we have jalapenos, some cilantro, and an onion. So I'm gonna start out just by putting canned tomatoes in a bowl. Now you could use fresh tomatoes as well. One thing I find is that if you use a lot of fresh tomatoes, of course, they get a little bit uh, watery and you just pour a little bit of that water off but it's good that way and the next thing we're going to do is dice up jalapeno so with the jalapeno what we want to do is take out the seeds and the vein now this is where all the heat is uh, so you want to get all this out of here peel out all the seeds You'd be surprised how warm that little vein is so you get as many of them as you can out. Go ahead and cut the stems off. This is just gonna be kind of a fine dice. Slice them up like this. And then what I'll do is give them a little fine chop. Now you make these as big as you want. Uh, for most people, you know, that you wanna make them fairly small because you don't want them to get a little hot surprise. One's probably enough, but you could really go with more. Okay, now we're gonna put these in, and before I do that, I wanna just put uh, the seeds in a little garbage bowl here. You wanna be really careful about uh, washing your hands after this because you got some hot stuff on there. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, our onions, our cilantro, lime, and garlic salt. All 
right, that looks like that'll do it. And when we come back from the break, I head on over to Spokane, Washington to learn how they make our seasonings at Miklich Company. And Vicki's gonna start with her black bean and corn salad. Harrods Cookhouse Field the Table is brought to you by WorkSharp Knife and Tool Sharpener, Miklich, the Spokane Spice Company, Harrod Outdoors Online Store. This is Harrods Cookhouse Field to Table. I'm here in Spokane with Joyce at Miklich, and I thought it might be interesting for her to tell me a little bit about where our seasonings are made, the history of this place, and so thanks for spending some time with me, Joyce. You bet. So you guys um, make all kinds of seasonings, not just for sausage, which is probably how it kind of originally started, but yeah. And so is that something that you know you just like to cook, and so you kind of got into making seasonings for all different kinds of things? Yeah, yeah. and just would come up with kind of yeah. wild ideas of what would be really good on pork. Right. Like our coffee cocoa and orange mm -hmm. one. It's got some heat yeah. and it, you don't taste the coffee or the cocoa, no. but it's just really a nice blend. And that's kind of how I got started in this is that I just love your seasoning. So we had been making some of our own and so it was just a natural fit. That was great because we sell yours. Yeah. As you well know. And you guys do a great job for us. And one of the things we wanted to do maybe was go back and kind of see the process. Yeah. And I know that Don has a mix in the hopper and he can show sure. you that. Super. Well, let's go on back and take a look. Okay. Okay, Don, tell me how you make our seasonings when you, okay. when I give you an order, how do you okay. do it? Uh, for the most part, uh, the, like the garlic and onion and that sort of thing are in these bigger tubs. Peppers, right. all the peppers are right here, so I can just come here and scoop it out. Right, and everything's by weight, so you just mm -hmm. get what you need Everything and we do, put them by weight. We do it by ounces. Yeah. I weigh it, and uh, I end up taking it in there. Oh, let's go check it that, out. Yeah, to that big uh, mixer. So I can do about uh, 300 pounds at a time. Holy cow. Yeah. So you could do a large order. <laughs> and then as far as a bottling goes, once it's done here, does someone else do that? They do, right and in there. Back, okay, let's go check it out. <laughs> Take you to another room. Okay. He's putting this into bags right now. Uh-huh. That's awesome. So, uh, well, thanks very much it. for your time, Don. You bet, Appreciate Richard. it. Uh huh. Yeah. Back from Spokane. Well, hi. Just in time to make some black bean and corn salad. That was a pretty interesting trip. How's Joyce? Oh, she's doing great. Oh, yeah. good. It's nice to see him. Good. So, what do you got going here? Well, in the bowl, I already have some black beans and some kidney beans and a can of corn. I just rinsed them and drained them, and then I put them in this bowl, and I just added a real small green pepper. I think it's going to be real nice to have a fresh vegetable salad to go along with our wild turkey. So what all go else goes in? I have some cilantro and a jalapeno and some white sweet onion and if you'd like to squeeze some of those limes in there okay. that would be great. This smells really good. You know, I love the smell of lime and cilantro. These limes are pretty juicy. Good. Okay, all three of the lime halves are in. Great. Then I add about a teaspoon and a half of cumin, ground cumin. So if you want to stir that up while I'm yeah, doing this. Yeah, sure. And then a tablespoon of minced garlic. And I just used the kind that was in the jar. It's much easier that way. I kind of sprinkle that around so it's easier to spread. A table, about a tablespoon or so of just some regular old salt. Boy, it's just really starting to smell wonderful. Hit it with just a little bit of vegetable oil to help everything kind of stick together. And that's it. Is that kind of it? That's it. And then you just let it sit in the refrigerator for a little while and everything comes together and boy, it's fresh and yummy. Well, let me check on the uh, turkey okay. and see if we're ready to do that yet or not. Oh, I think we need to let this go a little bit longer. It's coming along really well though. All right, let's start making those churros. Okay. They're not quite ready yet. Okay. So how do we do this? Well... These look really good, by the way. It's easier than it looks. You take a couple of packages of cream cheese, mm -hmm. and then if you want to scoop out about a half a cup of that uh, sour cream there. Okay. I love a little cinnamon with the Mexican food. It just goes right in. And then you can get the mixer hooked up if you'd like. Okay, go ahead and start mixing. And 
then you add two tablespoons of white sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla and mix it really well. Okay. All right, we're just going to finish mixing this and when we come back, we're going to finish our churros and we're going to start assembling our enchiladas. Coming up after the break, Vicki and I make cream cheese churros with a sweet cinnamon and sugar coating. We assemble our turkey enchiladas and ready for baking. And later I make margaritas to accompany our outdoor meal. It's about time for good food and great weather. Harrods Cookhouse Field the Table is brought to you by WorkSharp Knife and Tool Sharpener, Micklich, the Spokane Spice Company, Harrod Outdoors Online Store. This is Harrods Cookhouse Field to Table. Welcome back, we're working on our churros here, and let's remind everyone what we're putting on the inside. There are two um, packages of cream cheese, two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a half a cup of sour cream, and you just mix it all together. And then she's rolling them up, I'm rolling them in some butter, and then we roll them in some cinnamon and sugar mix, and then we just put them on the tray here, and we're gonna bake these at 350 and how long do we do that? For about 15 minutes 15 or until minutes. they get really golden brown. So here's our last one and then we'll do the same process. Roll in a little butter, our cinnamon sugar mix. And on the tray. Wow, those look good. Those look very good. And we're just going to put these in the oven and then our turkey's been cooling and we're going to start on that here in just a second. All right. All right, we got those churros in. Let's start with the enchiladas. We've been boiling the turkey legs for about an hour and then we let it cool and then I just deboned it. And we have a pile of our meat right here and I'm going to add this to the bowl. And we didn't add any seasonings, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and season the meat a little bit and then Vicki can start making the sauce. So what we like to use is our game bird and chicken seasoning and we don't have to add too much but we just want to add a little bit of flavor to it because there's really uh, no seasoning at this point. Okay, now what do we add Vicki? I put in two cans of cream of mushroom soup and then you can mix that up All while right. I'm adding. All right. Then about a cup of sour cream. I'm just eyeballing it. This is a easy recipe to guess. And then some green chilies. I use the large can. I like to save a little bit to put on top for garnish too. Okay. I put in just a little bit of garlic salt. And hot sauce. A little bit of hot sauce. That's what I like. Boy, and it smells great. It'll be good with that turkey. Is that pretty good? Yeah, that looks great. So now what I do is I put a little bit of the mixture in the bottom of the pan okay. so it doesn't stick and it, yeah, that's pretty good. Just try to spread that out a little bit. Okay. Kind of keeps them from drying out a little. I like that, you think? Okay. Then, I put just a scoop, maybe half a cup or maybe a little bit more on a tortilla, just a regular old flour tortilla, a little bit of cheddar cheese, and roll it up. You want to do that part because you've got the pan yeah, over there. Roll this up. Mm -hmm. All right, that's not too you, bad. Then you just keep going. Wow, those look good. Those look very good.
All right, we're gonna finish putting these together and get them in the oven, and when we come back from the break, they should be all done, and we're gonna make some margaritas. After the break, Vicki and I finish preparing our enchiladas. Cover and bake to perfection. I'll show you an easy way to make refreshing margaritas complete with a fresh lime. And we move our creations to the sunshine on the patio. There's nothing like our cheesy, creamy turkey enchiladas, especially when enjoyed with family and friends. Aaron's Cookhouse Field the Table is brought to you by WorkSharp Knife and Tool Sharpener, Micklich, the Spokane Spice Company, Herod Outdoors Online Store. This is Herod's Cookhouse Field to Table. All right, I think the enchiladas are done, so let's go ahead and pull them out here. Oh man, those are looking good. All right, we're gonna let those cool. And while those are cooling, we're gonna go ahead and make some margaritas. So what I've got here is some ice in a pitcher, and I've already started salting the rims of my glasses. And the good way to do this is take a lime that you've cut and just get the rim of the glass wet and just put it in the salt like this. And there we go, those are ready. So for the margarita mix, what we wanna do is we're gonna take about one part tequila to every four parts of our margarita mix. So in this case, it's gonna be about four ounces of tequila. And then we're gonna pour in our margarita mix. It's kinda of nice, so you can make your own or you can just buy these pre-mixes makes it pretty nice. And we're just gonna pour that right into our pitcher here. There we go. And right there is about what we need. Pour in our tequila. And then we wanna give that a little bit of a stir. Mix it all up real good. Oh, that's nice. And we're gonna pour that into our glasses. Try not to make a big mess if you can. <laughs> there we go. And what we'll do is just take a, a lime, garnish it like that. And there we have it. That ought to go really well with our enchiladas. So I'm just gonna finish pouring these and then we're gonna head on outside to the patio and enjoy a great meal. Good bird, Dad. Huh? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? How about that? Harvesting game in the field is a very gratifying experience. It represents the culmination of hard work. Prettiest, biggest one I've ever killed. That's pretty cool, huh? That's cool, I'm happy. But for us, we also imagine being able to share delicious wild game meals with family and friends. Think of those margaritas, Tyler. They look good. Is that too much? Thank you. I don't think so. Good. I believe that providing for others is part of our social well-being. Big bird. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Head back to camp. Came back to camp, yeah. Yes, Just walked up. Walked up over a little bank like this up. and saw him coming saw at us. Saw the top of his head and blasted him. I go, there he is right there. Oh,
Macros. Dessert time. Ooh, Dessert yeah. time. Look at that. Right off the top. Oh, a nice little crush to it and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. And so ends another journey from field to table. Uh -huh. Thanks for watching this episode of Herod's Cookhouse Field the Table. Be sure to stay tuned for upcoming episodes of more wild game recipes. Head on over to our website to find the recipes. Also, buy our seasoning so you can make your own. You can find us on Facebook at Herod's Cookhouse. We'd love to see photos of the food that you've cooked as well.